diverse, um, I suppose, set of backgrounds and expertise and interest in music, but they really coalesce around the traditional music of Scotland and Shetland and Ireland and mixed together with the um, music of the Baroque through to around um, 1650, 1700. And there is actually quite a surprising overlap between the traditions uh, of the Baroque and uh, traditional music in in, in uh, Scotland and Ireland. And those traditions and that, that, that sort of... Uh, joy in music making and spontaneity and virtuosity we wanted to try and capture and see if we could fuse together so our lineup is uh, obviously me on recorders um we have two fiddle players one of whom um took a very conventional route through learning the violin and then studied at conservatoire um and then um uh um, got into uh, traditional Scottish fiddling uh, through leading a summer school. And the other fiddle player grew up in Shetland, um, so has a whole lifetime of traditional uh, fiddle tunes and uh, folk music in her blood, but then came to study uh, Baroque violin. Um, so there's a lovely sort of crossover there. Um, we also have a, a theorbo player and a, um, a viola de gamba. So we have a, 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 a lovely um, uh, set of colours um, in, in the group, as well as, uh, unusually, a sackbut player. So one of our violin players also plays a sackbut, which was the predecessor to the trombone. So it's a very colourful group. Um, we're quite flexible, um, and we, we like to do all of our own arrangements. We play from memory exclusively, and we're, we're very keen on taking music to different settings and to new audiences. So we don't want to play necessarily just in concert halls or churches, which is the sort of mainstay of Baroque musicians i guess um we're very very happily go anywhere there's an audience to hear this type of music and we're, we're very keen to break down some of the barriers uh of of going to a classical concert now i uh, believe you play in the para orchestra can you tell us what instruments are involved i went on the website and noticed some really quite unusual ones well, the Parrot Orchestra is just one of the most exciting groups I've worked with, and uh, it's really opened my eyes to new ways of making music, to creating music, um, and it's it's really opened up um, some of the musical avenues I can explore. So it started in 2011 with a group of four musicians, and now I think it has several dozen uh, musicians on the books. And um, it, it, it's sort of redefining what an orchestra might be and sound like for the 21st century and for people with disabilities. So, yes, you will find some orchestral uh, uh, instruments involved. So we have uh, a string section of violas. Um, we have some woodwind instruments. Um, but we also have uh, traditional Indian instruments like tablas and dorubas. We have uh, electric guitars. We have um, um, instruments played uh, by technological means, uh, so driven by iPads and computers, breath sensors, um, and keyboards and moogs and all sorts of things. Um, and it's just the most exciting way to bring the recorder, which is this very uh, traditional instrument, but yet very versatile. So I can find myself at one point playing um, with uh, a clarinet or a bass guitar or a harp or a keyboard and a moog and it's it's um those, those musical possibilities are very interesting to me um coming from a, a background of of a fairly sort of straight laced classical music i guess um we've done some really exciting gigs i suppose the most exciting and high profile was the closing of the paralympic games in london in 2012 and that uh, was a most incredible summer wasn't it uh, the weather seemed to be good and there was just a wonderful buzz around london in particular and to know that uh, playing at the closing ceremony was on the cards, but not being able to tell anybody was really, really exciting. And I just remember the noise walking into the stadium and hearing a wall of sound everywhere we went um, on all four sides. Absolutely wonderful. And of course, to be playing with Coldplay was the icing on the cake. It's not something that you do every day. How do you learn the music? It really must be very difficult. Do you do it by braille or by ear or I suppose both? I don't know. How do I learn the music? Good question. I learn through a variety of means, really. Um, I learn mainly by Braille music. Um, that's my, my preferred means because I like the detail 
that it gives me. It gives me full access to the score that the composer wrote. I also find it very helpful to read on trains and undergrounds and buses, uh, and I find that I can revise the music quite well just by reading the score, um, which I wouldn't be able to do otherwise. So um, I find Braille music a very helpful tool, but I learn quite a lot by ear. So if I'm learning a new piece, I would probably uh, try and get hold of a recording. I would listen to uh, tracks on YouTube now and Spotify. The concerto that I'm playing in June, I, I first heard when I was about nine. It was on one of the first ever recorder tapes I bought. And to be honest, I can't really remember a time when I haven't known how to play it. Um, that's not to say I could always play it brilliantly, age nine, but um, I don't remember sitting down to learn the notes. They sort of um, absorbed into my brain like a sponge over repeated listening, it has to be said. Um, so I don't ever remember sitting down to learn the notes. They just sort of fell into my brain. Um, but obviously, you know, over the years, I've refined what I do with the piece and uh, practiced it and studied it in more detail. Now, you're going to be playing the Vivaldi Concerto with the String Orchestra on the 13th, uh, 15th of June at St Mary's Church. Can you tell us a bit about the work? Yes, I'll certainly say a few words about the Concerto on the day. But just for now, um, Antonio Vivaldi, born in 1678, lived in Venice for most of his life. Um, one of the most renowned composers of his day, of the, of the Baroque period, um, and arguably one of the most notable composers of classical music as a whole, um, mainly for a few works, including The Four Seasons, his collection of four violin concertos, um, which is absolutely brilliant, if a little bit overplayed and overexposed. Um, in fact, Vivaldi wrote over 550 concertos for various instruments and groups of instruments. Um, uh, and his his invention, his... his uh, sight loss how do you prepare for the logistics of performing well that's a really good question i think it depends a little bit on context so the kind of performance i'm giving but by and large um the most difficult thing is not actually the musical performance insofar as yes it's difficult but i can practice that in advance and prepare myself and turn up to the gig basically confident in what i'm doing um the main challenge for me is making sure that nothing gets between me, the music and the audience, especially in terms of my visual impairment. So from the moment the audience can see me to the moment I'm unseen again, um, I, I, I want the audience to be absolutely uh, relaxed uh, and not on edge thinking, oh gosh, does he know there's a step between where he is and where he's going to play from or gosh, his, his head is very close to the violinist's bow, I wonder if he knows that. Um, because that detracts and distracts the audience from what I'm doing, and I don't want that at all. So for me, it's about taking a little bit extra time in the rehearsal. So uh, I would usually uh, prepare with my uh, fellow musicians or the conductor, in this case, how we're going to get on and off stage, whether I'm going to be guided or whether I'm going to follow someone. Um, how we're going to acknowledge the audience, you know, are we going to bow, are we going to shake hands afterwards, um, am I going to turn to the orchestra to tune, how we're going to start the piece together, you know, can I um, hear the conductor breathing, uh, can I hear the, the, the first violin leading us in, or, or am I going to take the lead, and in fact on this occasion it might well be me that takes the lead, because it's quite hard to do otherwise, so there are lots of practicalities, um, quite aside from the, the music, which need I think a little bit of extra planning and consideration if you can't see, but nothing is insurmountable. I know that you're an Olympic sportsman. Can you tell us all about your goalball experiences? Um, do you still play? <laughs> yeah, it's probably more accurate to say I was a sportsman. Um, I'm certainly not a sportsman anymore and don't do nearly enough exercise. But when I was at school, I took up goalball and played for many, many years and spent most of my weekends uh, split between playing goalball all over the country and playing music. Um, in fact, I remember one memorable occasion when I raced home from my first ever Great Britain men's training session uh, to go out and play a clarinet concerto. It's the kind of schedule that would terrify me now, but as a teenager it just seemed really exciting. Um, I think music and sport actually have a lot 
in common um certainly for me in terms of the mental preparation uh, before i play a concert it was very similar to the preparation i used to put in before playing a match um obviously there's the dedication and training and practice that one needs to go through and also the idea that at some point you're going to have to perform um and you've got one chance to get it right and for me that's very interesting and and certainly my musical career has very definitely benefited from the years of sport that I did. My last question, James, thank you so much for all this, um, is one of our members wanted to know if you give lots of concerts and what you have coming up in your diary. What's coming up? Well, a couple of weeks after the concert in Croydon, I'm playing in the Hitchin Festival, and that's with my long-term collaborator, Trevor Hughes, who's a wonderful organist and pianist and that's going to be our program taking the recorder for a walk and then later in the year in december i'm delighted to be returning to prague to give the premiere of a concerto that was written for me by andrew downs back in 2016 so i'm going to be spending a lot of the summer revising uh, my uh, part for that and practicing and really getting inside a, a new work which is tremendously exciting for me uh, but in the meantime, I'm taking a little break because Caroline and I are expecting our second child and that's going to be early in July. So it's going to be a very busy summer all round. Well, that's wonderful news. Congratulations to you and Caroline on your um, second child on its way. Um, and anyway, thank you so much for doing this recording. It's been really, really interesting and I'm sure all our listeners will have learned so much about the recorder and about yourself. And also, I'm looking forward to playing the cello in the orchestra and hearing you playing the Vivaldi. So bye-bye, James, and thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. It's going to be a great pleasure coming to perform for Croydon Vision again. It looks like a fabulous programme, and I hope all of your listeners have a, have a wonderful evening. Thank you.